no weapon, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, sing. Because it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Sing it with me, it won't work, cause it won't work. It won't work. Sing it with me, it won't work. Can someone type that below this video? It won't work, it won't work. It won't work. Come on, saints, it won't work. It'll never, it'll never work. It won't, it won't work. Sing it with me, it won't work. You tell the devil, it won't work. It'll never work, it'll never work, it won't, it won't work, it won't work. Come on, put your hands together this morning and help me sing it. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, cause it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work see you with me it won't cause it won't work it won't work it won't work. Come on, say it won't work. Sing it, church. It won't work. My God, it won't work. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again today. My name is Sophia, and I am so excited to be here with you uh, to share with you some words from the Word of God. I want to thank you to uh, give thank you to Pastor Sean and uh, Amy for allowing me the privilege to be here in front of you, uh, to bring you the Word of God. It really is um, an honor because I take Word of God as special, it's powerful, it's sharper than a double-edged sword, and it can set anyone free by just reading the Word itself. And this, this I don't take lightly. And I pray that today what I'm sharing with you is something that will really encourage you in your walk with God. So today I would like to read uh, if you would join me in reading today from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Okay, now we're going to read from 1 through 13. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them out ahead in pairs to all the towns and villages he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is so great but the workers are so few. Pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send out more workers for his fields. Go now and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take along any money or traveling bag or even an extra pair of sandals. Don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter a home, give it your blessing. If those who live there are worthy, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. When you enter a town, don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide you. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If a town welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you and heal the sick. As you heal them, say, the kingdom of God is near you now. 
But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into the streets and say, We wipe the dust of your town from our feet as a public announcement of your doom. And don't forget, the kingdom of God is near. The truth is even is even wicked. The truth is even wicked. Sodom will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. So I just read to you from the book of Luke chapter 1 through 12. And I'm calling this message person of peace. And you will see why because Whenever I have gone to share the message of our Lord anywhere, there has been people, I call them the person of peace, that the Lord has prepared and they are ready to receive. And there are many. But this is why we have to be obedient and go and share our Lord's message with the lost who don't know him. And he is the one that brings peace in the atmosphere. Peace can only come from the person of peace. We can do everything in our own strength to try to bring peace, but peace can only come when we bring the person of peace into the atmosphere. So from the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 1, it says, After the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, to every town and place where he himself was about to go. When I have gone somewhere... I feel it's best to go with another person. Our Lord said go two by two. Because sometimes when you go share the message with someone, there's another person that can be beside you as your friend and as your prayer partner. And they could be praying for the person that you are sharing with to receive the message of our Lord. The Bible also speaks in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9, to go two by two. And there's many other scriptures. Second Corinthians 13, 1 also talks about that. And Jesus sent these men out to go ahead before him to places that he himself was about to go. So I want to tell you that our Lord goes before us to prepare places. Please don't underestimate. God wants us to go share this message with everyone. But he has gone before us and prepared places that you cannot imagine. And he is always with us. The word says that he is always, always with us. So we are not by ourselves. And he's gone ahead of us to prepare places. So when a gospel message has been proclaimed, you will see that a person is receptive or not and puts their trust in him. It is God who is responsible to bring them to him. When you're sharing God's message, sometimes you will see a miracle taking place right in front of your eyes. And it is God who's prepared these places, these people, and their hearts ready to receive the message of our Lord. And it is our responsibility to share the message with others. And it, it is the Lord's responsibility to do the changing in the hearts and the minds to receive the message. And the one that does that is the Holy Spirit. Please don't underestimate who you are. Brothers and sisters, if you're a follower of Jesus, you've been given the Holy Spirit. And when you go into the atmospheres of places that don't know him, and you speak with the boldness of the Holy Spirit speaking through you, things start changing immediately. You will see a change happening in the person immediately. They are ready to receive because God has already prepared them by the help of the Holy Spirit. He's already done it because he knew there was a time was going to come. You are going to go. You were going to go and share this message with them. So let's look at the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 2. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest so send out laborers in this harvest, into this harvest. May I remind you that there are people every day going to many countries to share our Lord's message. But the harvest is plentiful. The harvest, there's people in the world that still have never heard that Jesus ever came. Like the story I shared with you in the earlier session, there are many people that have never heard that Jesus ever came. 
This is why God is sending us to many parts of the world to share his message. But the laborers are few. So please pray that God will send more laborers into the field because the harvest is ripe and ready to receive. This is the time. This is the time we're living in right now where the harvest is ripe and ready to receive our Lord's message. So when you are going, don't fear. Don't fear because fear is not from God. In fact, in the book of Romans, it says fear is as if it is a spirit of bondage. It is as if a spirit that enslaves you. No, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but power, boldness, and strength in Jesus' name to be able to go and share his message. So when you are going to share God's message, <sighs> the honest truth is people will deny. People will reject the message. Because it says in the word sometimes that the gospel is not received. Gospel is foolishness to those who don't believe. It says it in the word. But God is with us. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And he will accomplish whatever in your, in your natural sense you are seeing the rejection. God will still accomplish his purpose when you don't see it. So it is our responsibility to still, to still share the message with the harvest that is ready to receive. And Jesus tells us to pray because prayer is powerful. When we ahead of time pray for things to happen, our Lord works in miraculous ways. We have access to God now. We can come to prayer to him anytime and ask him for anything and he will do it. Ask the Lord to help you in doing the work of the Lord. So please pray also that God will send more laborers into the mission field because, you know, um, many people are struggling right now. There are people that are on the field that are maybe seeing very few fruit and they're getting discouraged. We, they need our help. They need our prayers. They need our support. They need our encouragement. They need us because we are God is the head and we are the body. We work together to accomplish God's purposes in this world for the kingdom of God. So please pray for them, encourage them, and, and support them in any way you can. Luke chapter 10 verse 3 says, Go your way. Behold, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. There are times when the message we share is not going to be received readily. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who have been given, who, who are being saved, it is the power of God. Yes, it is the power of God, but to the world it's foolishness. Many times I have been rejected from the message I'm sharing. Many times I have, but many times it has also been received. And when it is received, it's like so refreshing. It really is. Because you see a miraculous work of God right in front of your eyes. Only God can do this. A person to change from darkness to light, only God can do this. So I want to encourage you, more good is happening than not. But there will be people that will reject. Because it is foolishness to the world. When someone is rejecting your message and maybe attacking you, maybe saying bad things about you, maybe spitting on you, maybe mocking you. They are not rejecting you. They are rejecting our Lord. And it is serious. It is serious when someone is rejecting our Lord. So I just want to remind you that you are not alone. God is with you. His Spirit lives inside of you, and He's speaking through you. If you read in all the gospel messages, there's many times when Jesus went to places and he was rejected by religious leaders so many times. So much opposition came against him. This is our Lord, the creator, was rejected se several times. When I read that, it really encourages me because I know that in the world, this will happen to me as well. But I know that I'm not by myself and our Lord understands. Luke chapter 10 verse 4 says, Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. What this is saying to me, that 
When you have to go sometimes and you take nothing with you, don't worry. God will supply all your needs. He will take care of you. He will provide for you in the most miraculous ways. People will bring things to you that you didn't even know you needed. They will. Miracles happen when you are obedient to sharing God's message. He will do amazing miracles. This has happened to me. I'm speaking to you from miracles that I have, I have experienced myself. Because we are doing the will of God. He will not leave us alone. He will not leave us or forsake us, the word says. In the book, Luke chapter 10, verse 5 through 9 says, this is very important, please listen. Whatever house you enter, say, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say, the kingdom of God has come near to you. You know, there's words that is used in Israel to greet each other. It's called shalom. And in other Middle Eastern parts, they say the word salam. What does this mean? It means peace. In the biblical times, they greeted each other with the word peace. Isn't that awesome? We can greet each other wor with the words of peace. We to this day, we can greet each other with the words of peace. Peace, we're bringing the Prince of Peace in the atmosphere of people that don't know him. When we say the word peace, we're bringing Jesus to them. And it's interesting because peace be to this house is a Jewish customary greeting, but we're bringing Jesus into the atmosphere of this person. When I say the person of peace in the scriptures, there is a person that God has prepared. Every place that I have been and I've shared message of our Lord, there is a person that God has prepared, ready to receive the message. There have peop been people I have met <laughs> that have shared God's message for four years, five years, but they never asked them to receive Lord Jesus as the Lord of their life. So it could be that people have invested in their life for many years, sowing seeds, watering, but they just have never asked them, are you ready to receive? That is the person that is ready to receive. Okay? So they are there, and they're ready to receive the message of our Lord. And it is up to, up to us to go share this message with them today. I sense to tell you right now that there is someone maybe that you are working with, that you have been talking to for many years and you've been friends with them maybe there is a neighbor that you have been ministering to and loving many years maybe there's a friend that you've been intimidated to share about jesus with because they're your friend but you have been loving and ministering to them for many years those people are the person of peace that god has prepared to receive the message of our lord now is the time for you to share with them because the harvest is ripe and ready to receive. Are you willing to be the laborer to go and share the message with them? What do you have to lose? Just share with them about Jesus and what he did for you and what he came to do for us. And it is their job to receive. If they don't receive, the Bible says, wipe the dust and move on. It's that simple. And it is serious. I'm going to share with you some verses where it is serious. Um, I also want to tell you when this person of peace is ready to receive the message, there is an uh, atmosphere of um, acceptance. There is, it's like they are just so excited. And they are, they're just a different person than maybe even they were before. They are, they're ripe, ready to receive. I don't know how to tell you, but these people are different when you are sharing with them. They receive, they have a smile on their face, they're transformed instantly, and there's joy and celebration in the atmosphere. Because the Bible says when one person accepts Jesus, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. There is a celebration happening for this person when you're sharing the message of our Lord with them. 
I want to encourage you that God wants to use all of you, not a few of you, all of you to share his message today. Today is the day. So the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 10 to 12 says, but whenever you enter a town, please listen to this. Whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your of your town that clings to your feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. So, um, many times you go and share about Jesus' message. It is not received. This has happened to me many times. But many times that I have gone and shared, it has been received with open hearts and open minds. And God has done a miracle. In fact, even healing has taken place. A deliverance has taken place. Supernatural miracles of God have taken place when you are received. But when, when they don't receive you, you know. You know that they're not willing to receive. It says, wipe the dust and move on. Because it is our job to share and the Holy Spirit's job to do the changing of the person. Jesus is still sending out men and women today. He is doing this. He is the one that brings salvation in the lives of people. I want to share with you the scripture verse. Um, but before I do this, I would like to pray for you. And then I would like to share with you the scripture verse. These two scripture verses. They are very important for you to hear. And maybe meditate on um, in your time. So I would like to pray for you that the Lord will put a passion and a desire for you to be sent for him, for the people that need to hear his message. And they might be people that you would be least likely to talk to. Uh, they might be people that you would never talk to, really. Or they might be people that have really hurt you. Or they might be people that are as family. Sometimes family is harder to minister to than friends, uh, you know, that we meet a anywhere or people on the street that we meet. So I believe these are the people that God wants you to speak to right now. And he wants to use all of you. So I want to pray with you right now. So please join me in prayer. Say, dear God, um, send me to these people. Send me to the people that you know the person, Lord, that has already rejected you several times, the person that is very angry, the person that is not ready to receive. Lord, this person that is my family, that I have a burden for, that I, I don't know where they're going to go one day, God. Send me to these people, Lord. And Lord, I pray as our brothers and sisters are willing to go, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them a passion in their hearts, a desire, strong desire to be a witness of you, to be a light of you, to be a representation of you in this world, to be an ambassador for you, Lord, to represent you in the most powerful way. I pray in the name of Jesus you would do great miracles through them. I pray when they lay hands on these people, they will be healed and set free today and lord i pray that the words they will speak will be from the words of your holy spirit that would penetrate the hearts and minds and free them immediately in jesus name may your peace that passes understanding will come unto their minds and they will receive the message with open arms god they would receive understanding lord be their help right now lord in jesus name i pray amen so these two scripture verse I want to share with you, it's very powerful. This is the reality of what we are dealing with right now. Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 15. I was looking for the scripture earlier, but here it is. Okay, let's read this together. Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 15. This is about the great white throne of judgment. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. They were found no place, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, 
small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is serious. This is what we're dealing with. And I know that the people that you love, that God has brought in your life, you don't want them cast into the lake of fire. And God doesn't want that either. But when it says that it will be better for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah than the ones that have rejected the Lord, it's serious. This is from the word of God I'm sharing with you, that this is what we are talking about. So please don't take these words lightly because this is from the word of God. And one more scripture I want to share with you. I have three more verses I want to share with you, but let's look at first from James chapter 5, 19 to 20. It says, Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and pressure is off you. I think God wants us to minister to the one that has wandered off from the truth. I think God wants us to tell them that God loves them that he wants them back to him. So please take time to minister to them in their most desperate time of need. But if they don't want to come back, the pressure is off. It's saying this in the word of God. In the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 16, it says, he who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. That is what's happening. When they are rejecting you, they are rejecting the message of our Lord, the creator of the universe, the king of kings and the Lord of lords is who they are rejecting. And one more scripture, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 to 38 says, For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Wow. I just want to thank God right now that I've been given so many opportunities to go and share God's message with so many people. But the time that we're living in now, people are truly searching for God. They're wanting to know who is the true living God? Where is God? Is he available for me? Does he want to help me? Yes, he does. He wants to save every soul. He's waiting for people to come to know him. He's waiting. Many don't even still know that Jesus ever came. There is people in the world that still never heard that Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. So I pray that from now onwards, from this day onwards, every single person you meet that does not know Jesus as the Lord of their life, I pray you will share his message with boldness. You can use your testimony. You can use the book of Romans, whereas Romans wrote scriptures you can share. You can go online and look up many different ways. Pastor Shan, I'm sure, has shared with you many ways. You can pray for them. You can encourage them in the Lord. You can read the word with them. There's so many ways you can minister to them. But definitely share with them the forgiveness message of our Lord that he came into this world to give his life for them so they can be reconciled to the one and only true creator God and that can they can only come to know him through Jesus so I thank you so much for this opportunity you're giving me again to bring you the word of God this message is serious and I pray that it is you are receiving this with open arms and I pray that God will use you from this point on in the most powerful way I'm excited to hear how God is going to use you and how he has already used you. You're welcome to send us uh, a message to let us know so we can celebrate with you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. To sow a seed, to give in this offering, to support the preaching of the gospel, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. 
if you have the ministry app on your phone it's the bottom button at the right the bottom right button the give button is right there you can also give through the ministry paypal account that address is paypal.me forward slash sean pinder ministries you can also give through the ministry zell account the ministry zell email address is info at seanpinder.net info at seanpinder.net you can also give through the ministry cash app account the ministry cash app address is the dollar sign sean pinder ministries you can also text to give all you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give non you can also make non-cash donations to the ministry. Stocks, shares, crypto, Bitcoin, that type of stuff. If you want to be extra generous and give out of your portfolio to support the preaching of the gospel that that type of giving that way of giving is now available we partnered with a company called overflow that makes that possible you can visit us online at app app dot overflow dot co forward slash sean pinder ministries you can also mail your donations into the ministry just remember to make your checks and money orders out to sean pinder ministries p.o box 2726 McKinney, Texas 75070 Never forget me and my beautiful wife Pastor Amy we love you we appreciate you we'll never take you for granted see you again on tomorrow God bless bye bye